Key players within Africa's business sector recently gathered in Cape Town, South Africa for the 2023 African Continental Free Trade Area Business Forum to discuss about the agreement and how to promote private sector participation in unlocking the potential of Africa's commerce and expand its trade to the world. Now, according to a statement released by the AFCFTA Secretariat, the main objectives of the event are to create awareness of the current trade and investment opportunities in the area among Africa's business community, connect businesses to funding opportunities for AFCFTA value chains, establish a private sector engagement platform for continued consultations on private sector needs in the implementation of the AFCFTA, and to also promote a private sector friendly environment, especially for small, micro, and medium enterprises led by women and the youth to also unlock more accessibility and, of course, affordability for them through these uh, finance opportunities. Now, also, the event primarily aimed to attract broad participation of Africa's private sector, strategic investors, financial institutions, investment promotion agencies, uh, business councils, chamber of commerce, or chambers of commerce as it were, multinational corporations, African women and youth business organizations, as well as heads of states and governments, including AFCFTA partners. So this morning, we have two guests on this conversation, first from Accra, Ghana, and the other um, from Lagos. But then I'll start with um, Prudence Sebahizi, who is the Director of Institutional Matters and Programs Coordination, AFCFTA Secretariat. So thank you so much, Prudence, for joining us. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. And we also have Dr. Ibikuri Jasper Eradiri, who is the Secretary General of Africa Association for Small and Medium Enterprises. All right, so it will be joining us during the course um, of the discussion that we are having this morning. And it's even important that we talk about it and what it means for Africa. So I'm just going to um, start with um, Prudence. Now, looking at the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, it was actually created um, to be the largest and freest trade block in the world, set to connect about 1.3 billion people across 50 five countries um, with a projected combined GDP valued at $3.4 trillion, um, as it were. But then it has been in inception since 2018. That was actually when it was introduced, 2018, 2019, as the case may be. But then we are seeing that it has not made that much significant impact along the trading activities and lines on the continent and beyond. So I want to ask why that is and what achievements you would attribute to these agreements. Prudence. Uh, th thank you very much. L let me just uh, start by giving a bit of background. When you look at the integration process of Africa, it starts way back in 1963, when um, the founding fathers of the Organization of African Unity aspired to have um, a continental common market. And um, having reached the point where the FCFT agreement was signed um, in 2018, after a five years uh, uh, negotiation process, I think this is a very big milestone um, in terms of um, implementing the Abuja Treaty. Um, I would say that uh, since the signing of the agreement, there is a lot of work that has to be done. Uh, the agreement has to be ratified by the state parties. Uh, currently, we have got uh, 47 countries that have ratified out of 55. And this is a very good indication that we have um, a political uh, commitment uh, to implement the agreement. Then, the next step is to put in place uh, national systems to make sure that the agreement is domesticated. Um, this process is taking place. Many countries have already uh, concluded that process of uh, domestication. Uh, you will recall that last year, uh, in October, when we launched the first guided trade initiative, uh, we got uh, eight countries that were able to participate in actual trading within uh, the FCFTA uh, trade regime. Okay. And then um, we thought when the agreement entered into force, it was time for the private sector to be in charge. Uh, governments have been negotiating the legal text. Governments are in charge of um, regulatory frameworks, putting in place a business-friendly environment. But when it comes to actual trading, 
That's the role of the private sector. All, all right, let's uh, just peg it there. Let's peg it there, um, Jasper, and uh, reintroduce Dr. Ibi Kure, uh, sorry, Prudence, rather, and introduce Dr. Ibi Kure, Jasper Radiri. Uh, he's the Secretary General of Africa Association for Small and Medium Enterprises. Thank you so much, Doctor, for joining us. Uh, doctor, you need to you need to um, unmute yourself and um, ensure that we have uh, clarity in terms of um, audio coming from your end. Because um, I'd like you, I'd like to take your reaction based on what um, Prudence says as regards trading activities, the implementation of the AFC FTA, and most importantly, why it took it so long to come on board, to be domesticated, and of course to be absorbed by um, other African countries. So, Doctor Jasper, can you hear me? All right, so um, in time, as we try to bring um, Dr. Jasper on board, I'll just continue with Prudence. Yes, uh, Prudence, you've talked about, um, you have talked about your optimism as regards the um, creation of the AFCFTA, but then you have talked also about um, implementation, as is where that it has dragged. Um, but then I'd like you to look at um, the deliberations, um, the decisions that were made uh, during the course of the business forum that was recently held in South Africa. What were those critical moments for you in terms of the agreements that were made or the discussions and the deliberations and what they recommended on how to expand uh, the horizon for African businesses? Very good. Um I, I'm saying this because um, the business forum is one of the operational tools of the implementation of the FCFTA. And it is the only platform that can be uh, leveraged by the private sector to play their critical role in the implementation of the agreement. Um, the business forum in Cape Town, the way it had been framed around uh, the four priorities which we think are going to be very critical in the process of implementation of the FCFTA. We are talking about the key priority sectors where the private sector should be looking for to invest because uh, studies have proven that uh, these are areas with uh, high potential. Uh, these are mainly um, agribusiness and agro-processing, uh, pharmaceutical industry, uh, auto automotive uh, sector, and tra uh, transport and logistics. But on top of that, we are very much aware, aware that the FCFT will succeed if we ensure uh, the inclusiveness of women and youth, as well as small and medium enterprises. So the conversation that you have seen um, in Cape Town have centered around those uh, four area priority areas and have made sure that women and youth and the small and medium enterprises have uh, their voice um, in the panels. Uh, that's why uh, most of the panelists were coming from private sector or they were representatives of women, youth or small and medium enterprises. And this has given them chance to share practical experiences in doing business within the FCFTA market. And this has also facilitated them to make sure that they do um, the appropriate networking across the continent in terms of uh, looking forward how to uh, fit into those priority uh, regional uh, value chains. All right. All right. Um, thank you. Uh, Prudence, thank you so much. I would have to pause you um, for a while again and see how to um, get response from Jasper too. Hello, Jasper. Can you hear me? I, I do hear you. Good All right. Finally. Okay, thank you so much. So um, Prudence has been talking about um, the importance and the significant benefits that can come to Africa, to businesses, and of course um, to the youths and women who work around um, entrepreneurship and businesses on the African continent. So even as I bring you in, I'd like to know what are those challenges that you would consider as impediments to uh, having some sort of actualization in terms of um, the significance and the um, implementation of the AFC FTA along the business business corridor on the continents. Okay, uh, great, uh, awesome. Uh, for, for us, for the SMEs, we, we believe that the, the business uh, forum was, uh, was apt, it was timely. Uh, and then for the SMEs to understand the AFCFTA and then to enable them to embrace it, they need to have enlightenment, they need to have continuous sensitization. Uh, and one of the things this uh, forum in Cape Town was able to achieve was to uh, bring that to bear. 
so going forward, we'll be having an SME caravan across the continent, uh, and this will enable the SMEs to, to better understand uh, what the AFF is all about, to demystify it. And then once it's demystified, uh, we can assure you that the SMEs who are uh, the major ingredients in the in the private sector. I mean, without SMEs, you can't you can't anchor a private sector. So they will now enable the uh, AFCFTA to succeed. You know, so this is where we we are having a hand holding with the AFCFTA secretary. So talking about the uh, demystification of um, the AFCFTA alongside um, the businesses, the micro, small enterprises and all that, um, I'd like to understand, do you think that we can have some sort of synergy um, along those business lines, uh, cutting across business routes in Africa, even as we open up the potentials that the AFCFTA can bring um, into the African economy? Okay, uh, let's, let's look at it from a perspective. We, we, we should be able to appreciate the economic potential of the AFCFTA. Um, uh, one, one major uh, uh, lead will be that it is going to uh, accelerate the boosting of our intra-African uh, trade, which has been on, on, on our, on our data, data for a long time. You know, everybody is talking about boosting intra-African trade. So this is one thing that the AFCF is able to do. It's going to aggressively accelerate it. And then beyond that, it's providing opportunities for investment. Now, I, I, put, I put another scenario before us. Assuming you have, within Africa, you've got um, uh, different uh, retail, retail outlets, maybe shop rides, maybe uh, uh, quick service restaurants as uh, uh, KFC and all that. What are the materials that are required by such institutions you know like for for it i give you a, a quick service restaurant like burger king tell you they need they need chicken where would they get your chicken from at these agro farmers the agro farmers are agropreneurs they're SMEs. so if they're able to supply chicken they're able to supply vegetables you know all these across uh, the value chain brings about the prosperity that we seek in the continent so um one, one, one major i tell you the takeaway for me from this event is the fact that we're able to understand that we have a direction, you know, and if we're able to understand that direction, then it is easier for us to succeed. And then this is why, like I said, we're happy and delighted to hold hands with the AFC Secretariat. Uh, initially, we had, we had had, an, uh, we had, had an, a fruitful meeting with them uh, in January and in March. Uh, and then this has given birth to what, what we're having today. So, so basically, there is, there is hope for the SMEs within the continent. It is only a, a pattern to onboard them and move them from, uh, let's say, the trans, a transition to move them from informal to formal. Uh, and that way they will become uh, uh, benef beneficiaries of the AFCFT. All right, to, to Prudence, I'd like to also get your reaction about how pivotal um, the role of um, the private sector engagement would be in the implementation of the AFCFTA. They were part of the critical stakeholders that held the meeting at the business forum. Um, judging by what um, Jasper has also said, how do you think that they can also contribute um, to bring about that um, accelerated transformation for local businesses and see how we can spread that network all around Africa? Yes, um, l let me uh, emphasize that um, the FCFT uh, is going to make two changes in the economic transformation of the continent. Um, the first change that is expected from the FCFT is to boost intra-African trade, which is currently very low because our businesses are trading more uh, with the outside uh, world than they trade amongst themselves. So we believe that uh, having opened up the market, having um, um, improved the business environment in Africa, we are going to uh, motivate countries uh, to trade amongst themselves uh, more than they used to do. Then secondly, the FCFT is going to create opportunities for investment. And when you create opportunity for investment, investment means that you are going to build uh, regional value chains where the small and medium enterprises, where um, multinationals are going to find opportunities. Assume, for example, um, Africa is able to focus, let's say, on the production of cars. Um, instead of importing uh, second-hand cars from uh, Asia, from Europe, from US, uh, we concentrate on producing brand new cars from Africa. 
each and every small and medium enterprise that can be um, involved in that value chain um, production of cars is going to benefit. The market is there. But because there have not been uh, any strategies to focus on the production side, then opportunities have been limited in terms of doing business, in terms of also uh, creating jobs. Um, one experience that we have had is that uh, during the first launch of the Gedi Train Initiative, most of the businesses that we have witnessed uh, doing business within the FCFT are small and medium enterprises where you see for the first time a farmer let's say um, a tea uh, producer in kenya for the first time have had the courage to export their tea to ghana because they have been assisted by the rules of the fcfta they have been assisted by the institutions uh, that have been put in place by the fcfta and we want to encourage that kind of uh, intra regional and inter-regional uh, trade within Africa, which will actually witness wherever there is a challenge, then the governments that are in charge will have to work towards resolving that challenge. All right, um, you have talked about um, farmers now, and of course, Jasper also mentioned uh, poultry farm, and that's the angle that I want to come in through because we know that Africa is actually plagued with so many crises. One of the one of it is the issue of uh, insecurity, um, herdsmen attack. Um, uh, you have different kind of instability, what, what uh, whatsoever, um, happening in Africa as it were, and that is causing a, a dwindle in the number of harvests that these farmers are able to get either for export or for um, domestic consumption, as the case may be. We also have issues of civil unrest, um, huge debt, insurgency, as I mentioned earlier, climate change issues, uh, natural disasters, corruption, dilapidated infrastructure. So, Jasper, these are major issues that Africa cannot but talk about, and that would definitely affect the volume, the movements, and of course, um, what appreciation that can come in terms of um, trade volume to Africa. How do you think that Africa can actually deal with all these um, challenges that is displayed with, despite the fact that it's hoping to scale up the conversation around the AFCFTA on the continent? Okay, uh, I, I will give you a response in this manner. Uh, interestingly, yes, this that, that's a true scenario, uh, but then we we are looking at solutions, uh, African solutions to African problems. And so one of the solutions that I think has been on, uh, put out there is, is by the AFCFTA is unveiling the guided trade. You know, there's the gui guided trade has been unveiled, uh, and that has also helped to uh, address some of the challenges that you, you, are, you are mentioning. But again, uh, we know there are issues of uh, barriers to trade. We know that there is market access. We know we have standards, uh, quality control and quality assurance. We know logistics is an issue. But all of these are being addressed uh, uh, brick by brick, and I, I believe that we're heading somewhere. Now, from our own perspective, there's something we call uh, Kabaka, which is a capacity aggregator uh, value chain system. So what that means is that we aggregate uh, SMEs within a particular uh, uh, value chain, and then we see how they, they are, their products are linked up to logistics and linked up to market access. So that is a solution that is being evolved, you know, and we believe that that will uh, help uh, most, most of the, the, the ag agro-processing uh, SMEs do not have access to markets, you know. So what we are trying to do and provide for them is to meet that gap, you know, where um, uh, you have an off-taker and then you have the market access and then you can now link them to the farmers. You know, so basically there is, there is, it's work in progress, but this is a, it is a way of addressing the issues. Uh, and what is most important is that we are looking at continental prosperity. And so if we, if we are able to become um, successful in this bid, uh, definitely we believe that we are going to be successful because what, what we see here is there is room for this to happen. And so once we are able to get this to happen, 
definitely there's prosperity for the SMEs within that subsector. All right, uh, back to Prudence. We know that digital platforms uh, contribute more in terms of uh, efficient trade, uh, most especially to businesses. And we know that um, African companies, even companies all over the world, are already embracing um, technology, as it were. We're in the technological era. So are we expected to see a heavy adoption of fintech services uh, to actually drive Africa's trade soon? Yes. Uh, well, I, I, right. this is this is to I, I this is to prudence this for, for prudence to, to give to give an inroad because I know there's the AFTFTA okay. hub which is a digital platform access. Yes. So uh, prudence will be able to deepen this conversation uh, for our general benefit. So I yield the floor to to prudence. Yes. Um, I was going to say that we have a number of good initiatives that will um, allow the SMEs to uh, participate in digital trade within the FCFTA. Um, some of those uh, digital tools, um, we have what we call uh, smart FCFTA uh, initiatives. Uh, we we are working with a Frexim bank uh, to establish uh, what we call um, uh, ATEX, which will be a platform where uh, all small and medium enterprises can register. They can first access information about the FCFT, that's very important, but they can also um, register to uh, to make sure that they are um, they are in, um, in in the system where um, financial institutions can be able to um, identify them, uh, trust them, and also ensure uh, that they can provide uh, necessary financial support uh, that is required for them to uh, to, to, to to prosper. But uh, most importantly, those uh, digital platforms that will be created for AFCFTA are going to facilitate us to identify those SMEs on the continent so that we can work with the partners to, um, uh, to build their capacities, uh, we can work with the partners to uh, monitor the work that those uh, SMEs are doing, but also uh, make sure uh, that we upgrade them in a way um, that is um, required by the, the financial uh, institution that uh, want to give them money, that want to uh, provide uh, financial resources to those SMEs. Um, the last point on um, digital trade, which is important, is the protocol on digital trade, which is now uh, being concluded within the FCFTA. Uh, this protocol is going to regulate um, digital businesses across the continent. In terms of protecting um, our businesses um, against, of course, multinationals uh, that are already uh, involved um, in, in, in digital trade, in terms of uh, protecting our government um, against um, cyber uh, attacks uh, from um, uh, outside the continent or from um, elsewhere in the world, and then ensuring that the, there is a conducive environment uh, for uh, SMEs uh, to be included um, in the financial uh, system or in the financial economy of Africa. Um, one can give just example. Uh, when you give SMEs access to financial transactions using a mobile phone, uh, where uh, you can access a loan, where you can do loan repayment, where you can apply for a loan using just your mobile phone, uh, I think this makes it easier for even small uh, and medium enterprises to interact in the financial world without necessarily uh, going to deal with big um, uh, financial institutions, which is sometimes uh, not easy for them. All right. So finally, um, Dr. Jasper, we know that COVID-19 pandemic and the Russian-Ukraine crisis were major debilitations for African businesses, SMEs. Some of the SMEs packed up, some had to lay off workers. Some had issues with uh, getting profits and staying afloat, as it were. So now that we are seeing the full implementation, adoption and full implementation of the AFC FTA across um, the value um, chain in businesses in Africa, can we safely say now that Africa's business is insulated from any other global economic shock that may arise in the future? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I, I think this is one situation we are, we are unnecessarily uh, putting too much premium on. Uh, the issue should be crisis. It mustn't be, I mean, COVID was a crisis, 
Russian uh, Ukraine war is a crisis. So we should have some short proofs, some short proofs for SMEs over crisis. Uh, this conversation is being broadened. We have open conversations to, to find appropriate solutions to this. So it's an ongoing concern. Uh, I would not be able to satisfy you with a definite uh, answer, but we know about this. And what we are saying is there must be short proof for SMEs uh, over, over uh, any form of crisis. Uh, and then this crisis could, could come any time. Uh, this, this were not planned for. So these are these are developments we're also working out with um, development financial institutions. And once we have a clear headway, we will uh, we will uh, we will cause cause a full known uh, information on that. So, but it's work in progress. All right, thank you so much, uh, gentlemen, for joining our conversation. We are actually optimistic and hoping that um, this new conversation around how to bring about growth for African businesses will be something that will be visible and uh, will transcend Africa's economy and spread to um, other continents as it were to see what um, economic glory can come to the continent. Thank you so much. Thank you thank very you much. Uh, it's our pleasure to be here. Now, um, according to reports, the AFCFTA is expected to reduce tariffs among member countries and cover policy areas such as trade facilitation, services as it were, and regulatory measures, including framework to guide trading activities on the continent. Well, um, so many economists are hopeful that these deliberations, even as they are in fruition, will bring about the total implementation of the AFCFTA, and that could also speed up the impetus needed to increase socioeconomic development for Afri Africa and see how it can make Africa more competitive on the global stage. We go on a short break and when we return, it will be time for international business news. Mm -hmm.